today I'm going to talk about the A to Stop program. Um, so I know it's an it's a very lengthy and terrible title, but uh, maybe we can stick uh, for the introduction to this um, one single line. It's about affordable artificial intelligence digital pathology for neglected tropical diseases. So if we would analyze this title, there are many components to this. So the first one is NTD. When it says NTD, it goes actually to all the different technologies that are using microscopy today for neglected tropical diseases. This can be stool-based uh, diagnostics, blood-based diagnostics, skin-based diagnostics, bacteria and tissue, or even non-NTD um, um, uh, use cases. So there are so many possibilities um, for this technology. The second one is on the, no, one, sec one second, yeah. So the second one is on the digital pathology. And digital pathology requires in a way that you have automated microscopy. Automated microscopy, that is um, a motor driving the light, and that requires then an X, a Y, and a Z axis motor. And especially the Z axis motor, that's an important one because there you want to have the focus right on the object that you want to see. Having the right focus is extremely important when it comes to the artificial intelligence. And so in the artificial intelligence, that is the driver towards the diagnostic. And that is what is gonna be compared to the standard of care when it goes to sensitivity, specificity, and so on words. So for having the AI, the artificial intelligence, it needs to be um, based on for example, a, an infrastructure, a, a database infrastructure that contains a large amount of images. And on those images, uh, it needs to find the feature, in this case, for us, um, eggs of uh, parasites. So when you look to this simple line, AIDP for NTD, there are many overhanging questions to it, a whole lot. But one of the most important one, that is, can you make it affordable? In the Western world, this type of technology is becoming more and more standard and also it becomes regulated. There are uh, from the FDA guidelines for uh, software as a medical device that is specifically looking to these type of approaches. So for us, we would like to have a use case and the use case is obviously connected to the JNJ donation program for Vermox. So on the next slide, this one says that um, um, we are we are going to look to the um, to to the donation program, and in the donation program um, today it started in 2006 already. We have um, donated since 2006, and in 2015, 16, 17 there was the development of Vermox tubable, that is the uh, Mebendazole, which is now approved. And so there is a commitment for uh, Johnson & Johnson to deliver 200, 000, 200 million doses annually up to 2025. Next to the donation program, it also says, and that's on the, on the bottom line of uh, the second, uh, it says Johnson & Johnson is currently collaborating with partners to improve STH diagnostic capabilities. Now that says a lot, but what is it specifically when we talk about the STH diagnostic uh, capabilities? For that, on the next slide, we have to look to um, the preventive chemotherapy intervention cycle. So this is extremely schematic, uh, quite a lot of um, detail and, uh, associated with this, but typically it starts with a survey in the field. And in that survey, they're gonna um, um, monitor for or, or measure for intensities of infections and the prevalence of infections. That information is paper-based and collected and then transferred in one way or another to a program manager who enters it into a healthcare system that goes to the Ministry of Health 
From there onwards, if free, uh, uh, preventive chemotherapy is needed, can go to the WHO. From there, it goes to the donor. Donor is donating compound, and then the population at risk can be treated with the compound. So in the case of Johnson & Johnson, the compound that is donated is Vermox. And the amount of donation, obviously, is now 200 million doses annually. And we hope to treat the patients that are in need for this compound. But all of it and the request on a country base depends on what the survey is generating as information. So when Johnson & Johnson is saying we are going to look into innovation on the diagnostics in a way it is trying to improve that uh, survey capacity. And there are many ways to do this. And so I'm going to explain today about one method, which is the artificial intelligence approach. In the next slide. So when we are talking about this um, um, innovation, we want to link it up into that donation program. And so there was last year from the WHO uh, came that 2030 targets uh, for soil transmitted helminth uh, control programs. And in that uh, document, they're talking about six um, ambitious goals. And the first one in the middle of the screen there, that is achieve and maintain elimination of STH morbidity in preschool age children and school age children. And that is indicated by the prevalence of uh, moderate to heavy intensity infections of less than 2%. And at the bottom of that page, in that, in that document, it says that the Kato cuts is ideal for identifying those uh, moderate and heavy intensity infections. So when we are now talking about new diagnostics or innovation, obviously that is already here on the 20 target, uh, targets, there is already uh, some basis for it. In the next slide. So in that, um, for that target, KetoCATS is now the standard of technology. I want to make just a sidestep. Besides KetoCATS, obviously, like you've seen the presentation from Sarah on a rapid diagnostic test, there are many groups, including ourselves, that are looking for new biomarkers and new technologies to step away from stool and go to non-stool based testing. However, based on the information that we have collected in our lab, that is a very complex uh, discovery process. And to our um, understanding today, the cost and the timelines for the development, the multiplexing uh, complexity, because we are talking about four worm species, and then all the discovery and development that is needed. I, it's uh, our belief today that those new biomarkers will not become available to inform the 2030 roadmap of the WHO. And so, therefore, I think it's important that we understand what the KetoCATS method can bring to the field. Just one step back, the Keto-Cats method is a very old method. It was first published by Cato in uh, 1954. I have never read that article. Um, and then there were a few, a few uh, additions to it. But finally, uh, Katz added um, the final component to this, and that is published in 1972. And so since 1972, this method has been largely unchanged. So it's more than 50 years that uh, this has been used as a routine procedure. In the next slide. Yeah. So we have conducted a market research and that was executed by Health Advances. And I was asking the end users and uh, the customers on the details on the keto cats, what what is their opinion and what is their um, appreciation of, of all of it, and where are the pain points? And so, the information that came back to us that is 
the highest level of the unmet need from the market re uh, research is on the slide evaluation. And there are a few other uh, components like slide preparation obviously remains difficult. But then look to the data capture and the revise of the MDA. So that is the bucket that is um, the most complex. And the reason why the slide evaluation is um, mentioned there, that is it requires a lot of hand on time. It has limited sensitivity and reproducibility, and you need to have a well-trained microscopy, a microscopist uh, to do that. So there's quite some possibility here to improve it. Now, just for the, for the uh, to, point, uh, to point towards it, specificity of the technology was not mentioned in this, in this uh, uh, market uh, research. But they came back to sensitivity a few times. And so sensitivity in the current keto cats method, and it was also mentioned in the previous talk, the sensitivity is something that people are looking to. And especially in the low um, prevalence settings, that becomes um, a difficult uh, position. So in the next slide, when I was um, researching artificial intelligence and digital pathology in the literature, I found this statement. So it says, although humans are really good at making visual and informational associations, computers are better at finding the proverbial needle in the haystack and being relentlessly consistent and rigorous. So if you would apply this statement to the keto cats method and to the topic also of sensitivity and on the reproducibility, I think it says a lot on why artificial intelligence and digital pathology can bring improvements into this uh, NTD space. Next slide. So I'm embarking on an affordable AIDP uh, concept you need partners for it, especially because there are multi-use cases in NTDs. And all of these partners that you're working with, with will bring their own expertise and resources that you need through, throughout the process of R&D and access. In our case, we selected the use case on parasite detection in egg. And since schistosoma eggs uh, schistomansoni eggs and also STH eggs are found in stool. Yeah, this technology can inform both the donation program of Vermox, but also the, pro, uh, the, the donation program of Praziquantel. So in a way, it's logic that Johnson & Johnson and Merck are working together on this innovation. So in July 2020, um, both uh, companies forged such a unique first of its kind industry partnership and in a way it is also building further on the uh, commitments that were made in the london declaration next besides the collaboration and that we have with merck we need other partners and we built that consortium that in which we are trying to bring the whole concept uh, to the next level in that group of uh, partners, first of all, we have Etteplan. That's the engineering group in Sweden, and they are building the prototypes. We need academic partners uh, to go through the complete uh, thought process. And we work with the Ghent University and also Jima University. Um, and those are uh, actually um, two labs with extensive expertise in the technology evaluation evaluations for this use case. Since we are aiming to bring the technology in a head-to-head -head comparison to the standard way of testing, we want to be associated to um, programs in the field. And so we have partners in APHI and also in Ethiopia and also in the Vector Control Division in the Ministry of Health of Uganda. And finally, we have ligature and bridges to development and they play a crucial role in the communication with the community and the stakeholders, but also for the adoption preparedness. There's quite a lot of 
additional uh, needed beyond the science and the technology. In the next slide. So as mentioned before, uh, the consortium is aiming to innovate the slide evaluation, the data capture and the, re and the revision of the MDA system. So the, intro, the, the technology that we want to introduce that is automated slide scanning, the whole slide imaging and artificial intelligence, and that combining it with the dashboard that is um, in real time almost available for making the decisions for MDA. So that is the component that we are focused on. On the next slide shows you the workflow. It's a proposal for the research uh, components that we are doing now. So it's not yet written in stone. It's open for, um, for further evaluation and discussion. But it starts with um, digitalizing the field studies. So stepping away from the paper workflow. And once the study is entered into a digital system, that information can be accessed by the control unit. And that's the unit that you see there in the middle. In fact, that is a computer that has data storage capacity and an AI processing capacity. And that control unit will allow barcode printers to print the barcodes, which can go on the stool pots and on the slides and so on, and on the paper if there's still paper. But it will also control the slide scanners to start scanning, to collect the images and send the images back to the control unit. The control unit will, will then make the whole slide image, run the AI on that whole slide image, and that report that is then generated, that it can be sent um, through the healthcare um, uh, system as a simple data package. So you don't need la large data information or images to be sent through through the internet. And so the difference of this approach is that we, in a way, don't need internet. It can be um, operating in a remote area without internet. Um, but in cases that internet is available, it might also communicate to an A2, A2 stop server, which can push new artificial intelligence code to the control unit or pull um, information of the performance of the unit back into the cloud server. So the image that you see there at the bottom right, that is the current prototype that was uh, um, engineered in Sweden. And I would just, that's the scanner. And I just would like you to show uh, on the next slide. That is um, the whole slide image there. And you can see here, it's a digital um, image. And if you zoom in into that image, you can start seeing the eggs of Ascaris and Trichuris. So, um, looks like an, an image, a whole slide image with sufficient amount of um, precision and accuracy for the artificial intelligence to start looking for uh, X. This is a slide that was um, from Ethiopia. It's a little bit um, a slide that is uh, by now uh, almost two years old, but we are looking for uh, new slides and, and and we will further evaluate the technology on, on new slides. Besides the whole slide imaging, there is a component of artificial intelligence, and that is on the right-hand side here. There is a graphical user, user interface that is generated, and since this is a schistosoma uh, meeting, so I selected here a schistosoma egg. That was recognized by the artificial intelligence in, an, in a stool sample, and uh, I don't know if you can read it, but uh, uh, confidence of the AI on this feature detection is 99.7%. So you can be pretty sure that this is a um, schistosoma egg. So the artificial intelligence as it is today, we built that on um, information that was collected in a library in total on images of 17,000 eggs. And when we 
perform this artificial intelligence on unseen data. Today, we have an analytical sensitivity and specificity that is greater than 95% for all the species that we tested. Okay, so we are pretty uh, confident that with these technologies as they stand today, that we have totally de-risked the, uh, the part on the uh, whole slide uh, imaging and also on the artificial intelligence. On the next slide. Yes, so on the next slide, it tells you more or less where we are today. We are still in research and we are designing uh, prototypes um, the prototype that you see there, that is a picture of prototype two um, at the moment in the Etaplan group is now working on prototype three, next generation. So we will continue to work and improve on those prototypes. And for the rest of the year, um, we will see what the performance of those prototypes are against the target product profile that is available from the LIM paper uh, 2018. And, and so um, that is going to be the main um, objective for the remaining of this year, performance testing and eventually comparing it to the standard of uh, testing. When will we go into a design freeze and start producing um, beta prototypes? That depends on so many factors. Um, we don't know yet, but it's not going to be this year. That will be somewhere in, in next year. When we build prototypes, it's not a prototype only on the scanner, it's prototype on the control unit and might be prototyping the whole system as it is given there in the picture. And then the development can take some time and then we will need, at, obviously at the end, we will need the, to bring the technology to the field. And as of today, that is maybe the biggest headache that I have and that many people with me have, that is, and and also in the previous talk, uh, Sara in her last slide um, nicely summarized it. So how are we going to bring um, artificial intelligence, digital pathology for NTD into the field in an affordable way? There are quite a lot of questions around it. And, and so um, with this audience, maybe we can also start uh, additional um, thinking on the, the way for doing that. Right, so the last, uh, the next slide is then my conclusion. So you need, if for ambitious projects like this one or the previous one, it's critical to have strong collaborations. And it's just the strong collaborations and all the perspective of the different groups that is driving the innovation. This technology is actually a second generation Kato Cuts. It's building on a 50 year old technology and it's taking it to the next level. And it's an opportunity to improve the SDH and the Shisto uh, programmatic decision making. So when we were presenting this to the community so far, we have only received extremely positive feedback. Um, there are a few questions on affordability and uh, there are questions on on the access component, but in general, it's been very, uh, very positive. Uh, as mentioned before, affordability and scalable, those are the key questions and we need much more um, uh, inputs on how we're gonna do this. And then finally, so you have seen, we are building hardware and software for one use case within, within NTDs. But that is not where it can, should stop. You can add many more use cases within the NTDs that need microscopy, and you can even go to non-NTD use cases. So it, the, the success of this type of technology largely depends on the menu. And I can envision a menu list of use cases for this technology, but obviously, it's dependent on partners, on investment, and on vision to bring it forward. And with that, I think I would just like to... Uh, uh, next slide, Cameron, if you can. Yeah, so again here, we are working with different partners in the field, in the industry, 
uh, especially the group here in Ataplan has been uh, extremely useful for bringing innovation both on engineering and artificial intelligence. But we need the partners also uh, for technology evaluations like uh, Ghent University and Jima University, the partners for evaluating it, uh, EPHI and the Vector Control Division, and partners for management and uh, engagement bridges uh, to development and ligature. The images that we collected, they were actually taken within the Starworms program and that was done together with a whole group of individuals that are listed there on the right hand side um, in Camry, in Kenya, in Cambodia, in Tanzania and in Ethiopia. We are very thankful to the people um, for helping us and to prototyping this technology. And with that, uh, Cameron, I would like to give it back to you. And thanks for uh, the opportunity to present this innovation to you. Thank you.